They surpass my expectation. I learned to deal with my tribulations. And my spiritual separation is so far a new sensation. Oh, the mission, my gratification. They have my dedication. There is no limitation to what I do for my salvation. The prompt to the revelation is a cause for celebration. As I work on my sanctification, now without any reservation. I thank you, congregation, for hearing my presentation. This is the end of my AC. Yes, God's my motivation. because it really was awesome. <laughs> well, that was special, man. Yeah. What God does with people, us as children, right? Yeah. You know, uh, one thing I heard from <coughs> Doug that I think it's important that we... And we and, we, and this is really what we preach every day because it's where we find our comfort in God. When Doug said, you know, not many people know me, right? And that takes, an op, you know, we have, to let, we have to be known and let people know us. So it's, it works both ways, right? But here's what was really significant when you said that, Brother Doug. Um, right away it was like, I know one who knows you. Like everyone else might miss it, and we might, they don't, may, maybe not understand us. And, and when we come to a place where we understand God knows us, He knows our name, He knows every hair on our head, He knows from, from birth, from childhood, every hurt thing we went through, every area of confusion, every area of weakness, every area of success and failure. And we know that He knows us and loves us, we find rest. In him. And that's what Doug is learning here. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're all learning. Praise God. Because uh, there is one who knows us. And, and I, I never knew he knew me. And, and matter of fact, the even thought of him knowing me scared the crap out of me. Like, this, when you think about that, he knows me. That means he knows everything wrong with me. Amen. And we spent years kind of masking that. We spent years hiding that. We spent years... That's where all our insecurity comes from. <laughs> I just want you to see the good parts. And that's what... The, the amazing thing about God's love is He died for the very sin that we hide. The very sin that we're ashamed of. And, and without having that comfort of love, we, we, we run to things, don't we? Work, people, drugs food. We just run, 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 and, and then we get worn out. And, and God the whole time is saying, I love you. I, I've offered complete acceptance in my son Jesus, and I know you. So it's great to be known, but known, uh, believe in the truth that God um, is love. Amen? So uh, thank you, man. That was uh, great. I really was moving. And this morning, a lot of times um, in the body of Christ, we have people um, that really go through some trials. And some even run. Uh, I'll give you this quick story. Um, not too long. Well, how long has it been since our dog died, Colby? How long? Two years? So <clears throat> we had a dog, Colby, beautiful Australian Shepherd. And every, every once in a while, he'd, he'd uh, you know, you open the door and he'd kind of book out, right? And, and, and we'd be yelling at him, Colby, and, and stop. And he wouldn't stop and he'd go in the woods and, and he'd be gone for a couple hours. And, you know, my wife would always want to go find him and we wouldn't find him. And, and we would get a phone call and he would come back. And we had a brother that um, was struggling. And, and I think there's many of us that sometimes we struggle. And this one last time, Colby didn't come back. And he got hit by a car out here on 190. And he died, right? 
But God used our dog to help people in the ministry, even in his death. And we had a brother that was, was really growing, but he was still hiding and struggling with pain meds and some drinks. He was still... He was still relying on something to make him feel good because of his unbelief or his hurt that he's not fully trusted God with, right? And that's why we don't judge people, whether it's alcohol or drugs. Some people are workaholics, but that's acceptable. <laughs> You're never home, right? We, what are we running from? And, and until we run to God with everything and find healing, we can then sleep at night. Because everyone else may not know us or love us or care, but God does, and we know that. And that's what gets us through. So I was sharing with this brother who uh, drank, and he, and he came back, and I said, you know, like Colby, when you were going to go drink, God was yelling, stop. Don't go. And come back. And you went into the woods. And how many times are you going to run away from God and run to what's evil that's killing you? How many times are you going to run risking the chance that you may die, that you may get hit by that car? And he was using Colby as I was sharing that about his life. Come back. Don't go. Don't do it. And then they go. And we have to wait till they come back. And see, for Christians... We follow the biblical mandate. We don't enable and support sin, but we have to trust God and wait for those who want God to come to their senses. And we've had this often, and when a brother comes home, we throw a party. Uh, we don't, hey, you got to do some laps. You screwed up. I want to know what's going, you know what I mean? When a brother or sister who's a believer, a follower of Christ, not an, not an unbeliever, but those who confess Christ, when they leave, we have to let them go. Because if not, then we would be supporting sin in the church. And that's not holy. And this is the teachings of Christ. Some of it might be hard to understand, but I, I'm grateful to God because I believe the church is the remnant. The, the genuine church is really beginning to rise up. And truth is being is being told in, in ways that are unashamed. And, and, and it's also bearing witness to the false church. The goats and the sheep. It's really happening. I mean, for 17 years of sharing truth, I, I often received much ridicule, judgment. I, I don't know, for sharing what's true. And I see now, 17 years later, I... I, I I see it growing. I see the truths of Scripture and people really telling the truth because souls matter. And the Word of God matters. And people are starting to will, they get they understanding. And I'm not saying this is this is the first era that our brothers and sisters were, were brutally killed for the for the gospel two thousand years ago when the tw when the twelve apostles went forth and people were added to the church. And we're gonna be reviewing that today. But before we re review that and go over those teachings, we were talking about brothers and sisters that, that run away from God. And God makes it clear, the prodigal son, he leaves. But why does he leave? Oh, he might use a thousand excuses. He might even blame you. Well, you sat in my seat, you evildoer. He might spread gossip. He might hurt God's people. But ultimately, there's always a, a motivating factor for all of, all of them. It's because I want, to, I want to do what I want to do. And often, I want to sin. I, I, and, and, and God says, the prodigal son or daughter, when they go, he says, I deal with them, God says. And he says, when they come to their senses, the prodigal son, it says that, he said, when no one gave him, ready, anything, he, he ran out of every option. Every, every person he was desperate to, to, to find, to use, to hold on, it, it ended. But it was he didn't come back, be, listen, he didn't just come back because he ran out of money. 
God used the circumstances, come on, to have help him see himself. But he said something. When he ran out of everything, he then said, I sinned against God. See, that's the key part. See, if you don't recognize he sinned against God, then, then he ran out of something. He's just going to keep using people because it ain't true repentance. He said, I, I sinned against God and my father. And here's the other tell on that. When he came back, he didn't care where he slept. I, I Listen, I'll stay outside. I don't even eat pig food. I really don't. I just want to be back with my father. I don't care what. In other words, he's willing, ready, to do anything. Somebody that's not really repentant, who just ran out of stuff, and they come back and tell you everything you need to hear, the, the, the minute they have to submit, they get angry. Are they, did they really repent then? So we can see, right? We, we can see some of these things. But here's what I really love about the prodigal son. His father waited for him the whole time. His father trusted God for him the whole time. He wasn't worried. He wasn't sick. He wasn't able to function or not function because his son or his daughter was messed up, living like hell. He lived his life for God. And he trusted his son or daughter for with God. He entrusted the God who can raise the dead. Because we need to be able to live and live whole for Christ. And it's God's job, right, to discipline, to, to grow and he uses all the circumstances to do it. But what was what's wonderful, wonderful. The father saw the son far off, amen? And when the son came home, he said, my son who was once dead is now alive. And he threw a party. When somebody judges themselves and they say, I screwed up, I messed up, I slandered, I hated, I was immoral, I was wrong, I came to the end of myself, and I repent and I sin against God, we throw a party. Yeah. Now, I wish we had some catted, fatted calves. <laughs> so we'll take, I don't know, like a, a, some bologna. <laughs> Prepare the bologna. Ah, <laughs> uh, screw my I don't know, get a cupcake. I don't care. I just, we, God, we don't have to judge people that judge themselves. We are called a judge, but we're talking about judgment that's edifying, based on godliness, scripture, doctrine, not idiot, fool. How could you do that, really? You'll be doing the same thing in about seven minutes. <laughs> That, that, there's no place for that type of judgment. So how wonderful when a son, son comes home. So uh, we allow them to come and share as well. So is Andy? Where's Andy at? Come on, let's, let's welcome our brother who's home. Come on, Andy. Let's have a party. I'm Andy. Some of y'all know me. Most of y'all know me. Um, I was here from September to February, I believe it was. And um, I had some issues going on at home that I, I was just sure demanded my immediate attention. And uh, I didn't get the response that I needed or was expecting or thought I deserved. And uh, I left the program. Um, I didn't necessarily leave in the right way. I didn't leave in the right way. Um, more or less rebellious uh, against the authority. I came here to get help from them, you know, and I should trust them to do that, and I do. So, um, most of the reason why I'm back. Um, I like to say when I went home, I used what I learned here, and everything was great, but it was. It didn't take long at all. Um, uh, on top of that, I sent some emails to some leaders and gave my opinion on what I thought about things, and that's just what they were. They were my opinion, and uh, I was. 
out of line and judgmental. And uh, it wasn't my place. And uh, besides that, you know, it's like I uh, felt bad about it right after it happened, but once you hit that sand button, man, you can't take it back. And if that was the case, I'd have done that a bunch of times. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I knew this is where I needed to come back to. And uh, I trust the leadership here to give me the help that I need, because I definitely need it. And um, sorry for leaving you guys like I did, man, but I'm back. And uh, hopefully it won't be too long and I'll be back up here. And uh, once again, I apologize, man. Really. And, uh, hopefully I'll be back up here soon, man. We'll start back where we left off and everything will be good. Not an easy thing to do to tell the truth, is it? Amen, amen. I got to tell you, it's thank you, Andy, and thank you, Lord, for touching Andy and bringing him back. Amen. Hey, sometimes we're a prodigal for a minute. Some of you lose your, we lose our minds for 14 seconds. But that's cool when we, when we lose it that quick and we get right real fast. It's a, it, it really is a problem when you lose it and it's for a week or a month. Because bitterness and anger and they just, you all know, come on. None of, everyone here knows the pain of, and, and, and until we see, wow, it's me. Yeah, but they did that. I know they did that, but you can still love them. <coughs> well, I don't love them. Well, that's the problem. So we're just grateful for uh, the restoration process. And Andy is uh, amongst many, right? That we've, and for us, for me, uh, it's such a, the pain of, of the judgment, the pain. It is painful, I will tell you. Um, but what keeps me encouraged is no matter who it is, it's days like today. It's when we get the email or the phone call, hey, I, I know I almost I tried to kill all of you, but can you take me back? <laughs> and you know, God takes us back every day, doesn't he? Amen. But he takes us back with boundaries. In other words, he takes us back when it's true repentance. And, and if, if it's not, then we'll stay in that mess. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us. God, I mean, I, I don't think we like to talk about discipline and God's judging his children, but he does all that. Uh, he does that because he's a good, good father. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's really been a hot topic, talking about God's judgment, dealing with his children and discipline. And, and I'm thinking, it's crazy. What father would let their son or daughter go upstairs and have sex and shoot up and, 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 and curse dad and go, it's all fun. Love you. It's crazy. What church would we come to where if we could just live as we decide without any boundaries, any, any truth, any morality, anything to guide us? That's not the church. Because we're called to be holy. And God gives us the spirit and he gives us leadership and he gives us gifts so we can come together and grow. So I'm just grateful. I'm not sure what that was. Was it a bat? <laughs> it felt like a bat, like a bat laying the <laughs> He's like, no, it was a tiny little fly. It didn't feel like that. I thought a dragon landed on my head. I was like, whoa, it's picking me up. All right, let's get into the word, amen? amen. We had some great worship. Come on. Really sounded wonderful. We had a great program last night, and I'm grateful that I can wear sweat stuff in church. Amen. Those days of, you know, worried about what I look like, they're over. You, can, you, can, a pass, can a preacher wear a sweatpants? I don't, I don't, let me look at that. It's in the Bible somewhere. You can't wear sweatpants as a pastor. I'm telling you, it's in there. Legalist. You legalist, you. <laughs> right? Because we're free. I don't care what I wear as long as I get something on. I'm not preaching at the nudist colony down the road, I'll tell you. 
become all things to all people. I'm not going to do that. I will have a towel on. I'm just telling you. Listen, they need Christ. Matter of fact, me and my brother are thinking of going to that uh, Billy's bar. To that's not funny. <laughs> just because I'm comedic at times, you have to laugh at every. Ah, he's he's going to witness the transgenders. <laughs> yes, we are. We're praying about going to love them and sit with them and to get Christ with them. So keep us in prayer. It's a bar right down the road, and it's a transgender. Bisexual uh, bar, right? And God loves them. God loves them and desires that they repent and come to Christ. Amen? Amen. They're no different. I mean, we're all the same. Right? And, and that's what's awesome about God. Can you imagine one person coming to Christ there? So, but we need to be covered in prayer, right? And it's not new for us to go witness and share to whoever's in front of us. Not at all. And uh, it's wonderful because when someone gets saved and God uses them and they affect their whole family. I mean, that's what's so powerful, powerful about living for Christ. I'm talking about us as believers and walking in our purpose to know God and make him known that everyone that's in your life, you can affect for the, for the cause of Christ. Amen. And then, like one person, I mean, it could, could, and God could use to, to save hundreds and or thousands. So it's vital that you don't get stuck in the lies of Satan that oh, it doesn't work, because Satan's goal is to shut your mouth. Period. That, that's that's everything's derived because if we can be silent for the gospel, then it goes completely against the commandment of God. And. It doesn't mean people are not going to get saved because God knows his children that will not be silent. See, he has them. He has them everywhere. We're not the only ones. But if we won't go, he'll send somebody else. But he's called us to go. And we're going to see that in this morning as we get into the word. Jesus died. He rose from the dead. He appeared to many and then was taken up. And before he left, he told us to go and make disciples. We just cel celebrated Easter, right? He, he suffered. He died. It was brutal. He, he came back from the dead. Now what? What do we do now? He was taken up. They were standing there looking at him. And they even questioned some of the, the disciples. What are you looking up in the sky for? This Jesus who, who, who is God, who died and rose from the dead and, and, and visited many... Uh, he's been taken up, but he's going to come back the same way he left. He's going to come down the same way he went up. But then now what? What do we do now? And for the apostles, they were told to, to wait and to pray, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? And Jesus told them while he was on the earth, he said in Matthew 28, 16, 20, he said, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. When you got born again, Jesus is saying, go into all the world and baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. Share who I am with those that are in front of you. And I am with you always, Robert. I am with you always. I am with you always, Scooter. I am with you always, Dorothy. I am with every one of my children Everyone that repents and comes to Christ, your purpose is to make him known by your life, by your behavior, and by your words. That's your purpose. Yeah, but I thought, I was, I thought my purpose was to be a wife. No. It's to know God. But I thought it was to be a businessman. No. It's to know God. 
You see, we get it mixed up. Does that mean you don't have talents and gifts in, in a particular area? No, of course not. Of course, you, he gives you that, but he says, I just want to be first. Because if I'm not first, that thing that you're doing will lead you in pride. Come on. See, you'll, you'll, you'll begin to, to look to your, your thing, your gifting, your talent, your <clears throat> the people in your life. You'll be, able, you'll be putting them above God. And Jesus said, seek me, what, first, and my righteousness, and I'll add all those things. So if God gives you a business, if God gives you a wife, great, but just always love God more than the business. Always love God more than the wife. Always love God more than the husband. Always love God more than the dog. Always love God more than your shoes. Or whatever, everything and everyone is God first, and that will always dictate your peace. Because when we don't have that peace... Oh, we don't have God first, we have trouble. Trouble in my way makes me cry sometime, right? Many of us are crying because of our areas of sin, our areas of rebellion, our areas of unbelief or doubt, right? I'm excited because when we, when we preach the light into the darkness, Satan flees, man. He ain't here right now. We choose to bring him here. We choose when we choose to not believe God, when we choose to lie, when we choose to rebel, we invite Satan in. It's just like, I'll give you an instance. If I decide to judge or to, be, uh, uh, to not forgive an individual, God says that if I go to bed angry and I choose not to forgive you, for something. He says, I allow Satan a foothold in my heart. And it ain't going anywhere until I get rid of it. If, if it's a minute, a week, a month, a year, if it's after many trips to the psych doctor, because they can't get you, they can't get the unforgiveness out of your heart. We talked about it the other day. We don't have, any, you have unforgiveness here. Take two of these. What's that? An unforgiveness pill. No, it's not. It just shuts off the mind. So you don't think about the thing that's killing you that you have to think about in order to get healed. Because you have to give it to God. Whatever it is. So I in, we, we invite Satan in when we're disobedient. We had that happen recently. I meant someone meant to help somebody and they went out of bounds. And in doing that, it opened up Satan to attack. Let him attack us because God allows it, because we're suffering for holiness. Let us suffer for proclaiming the gospel. Let us suffer for living right. That's suffering. Jesus says, I called you to that. He, he didn't ask you. He said, I, I, everyone who wants to live godly will suffer. That's the right suffering. Amen. Amen. So our purpose, Christ is, is, is taken. He told us beforehand what to do. And then he said, I will not leave you alone. I will send you the comforter. And that was the Holy Spirit. And I think we should, when we look at these scriptures today, uh, it, it will give us truly how we're supposed to be living. And I think we can examine that this afternoon. And give the things that maybe are out of order to God to put in order. Amen? It may not always feel good, but it's much better to be in God's will than to feel good and be out of his will. The pro and the reason I say that is because the feeling good will only last a little while. We had a young man. It was very sad. He was sitting, his parents came in for an intervention. And his parents were both believers and... They struggled in their life. They were divorced at this time, but their 17-year-old son was in the middle of them, and he's doing a lot of drugs. And he'd continually leave the house, and, and now he's got, he had some court issues, and, and, and we, they, they wanted him to get help, but he didn't want the help. Some of us understand, you know when you want help, and you know when you don't. Right? You know when you say you want help, but you really don't want help. You eventually end up getting help, but it's not because you want it. It's forced upon you. 
But this young man, when the parents realized and heard, I said to them, that you can't do this for your son. So stop forcing him. Listen to your son. Listen to him. He's saying, I don't want you and I don't want your God. Then let him go. Let him have what he wants. That's what God would do. And that was foreign to them. But they realized that. And the son, the saddest part, was they said, okay, son, you can leave. He was so happy. The father called me just yesterday or the day before. How's it going with your son? He's so happy. But don't be fooled when I say this. This happiness is not God. It's wicked. He's so happy that he can sin openly. He was, even I could, even in talking with him, he was so looking forward to going partying. Wait, mom and dad ain't going to be here, and it's all right. How long will that type of sin last? How long will the season of sin that seems fun, how long before it pays dividends? And the dividends are jail, molestation, rape, <clears throat> abuse, death. AIDS, disease, depression, anger, frustration. You follow where I'm going? This is fun. <laughs> it's not fun. It's a lie. It's a lie. So when we get the phone calls that their son died, that's when it's so fun, more fun. Took a wrong pill. Yeah, but I love my family. No, you don't. If you loved yourself, you wouldn't be shooting heroin. If you loved your family, you wouldn't be lying and cheating and stealing. If you love them enough to say, I I I'll see you in jail. I I'll never be in your life because of my choices, but I love you. No, we don't. And it always goes back to the root of, do you know God's love for you first? Because if we love God, then we'll obey his commandments. Right? You're not going to obey someone you don't respect, honor, and love. That's, that's always how you're going to measure uh, and examine, are you following Jesus Christ? Do you love him? Yeah, I love him. Okay, let's examine your life. Or um, better, would you examine your life? What does that look like? I'm obeying everything Jesus taught. Not in legalism, not trying to earn his love, out of love. Like, I want to do everything he says, but I don't, but I really do. And he's like, I got you right where I want you, pal. Because he has your heart. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Your heartbeat is for him. It's no longer for another. And in that, you will learn to love him and obey him out of love, not obligation. Out of love, not ob out of obligation. Out of love, not out of obligation. That's not, that, that's works. Come on. <clears throat> so Christ gave us a great commission before he left. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He filled the apostles and he went and preached. Preaching the gospel, telling the truth is what they were called to do. Know God and make him known. Amen? And every time when we share God, the truth, God always will require a response. That's that. Your response is not what saves you. It's the humility of calling on the one who can save you. See, that's humility. Acts 2.41 Let all the house of Israel therefore know that certain Know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus whom you crucified. This was uh, the Jews who had just crucified Christ. He said, let all of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles... Brothers, what shall we do? 
And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. The gospel went out and demands a response. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of eternal life. <clears throat> it's not enough to hear and question. It's not, a, it's not enough to hear and, and, and ponder. Now, that's all part of it, isn't it? At some point, each individual has to reach out to God because God is reaching out to you. God is drawing men to himself. God has sent out his children to preach the gospel. God has proved himself. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of the gospel. And, and he waits for the world. Those in the world that are his. He waits for them to call on his name. He waits for the unbeliever to become a believer by humbling themselves and say, God, save me. God, I need you. And he does it. That's powerful. Uh, over and over again, we, we hear when real transformation begins is when an individual's will is yielded to God. When an individual comes to the, the point where they don't care uh, what they look like anymore. They're, they're, they're sick and tired of acting religious. And because it ain't real, they're stuck and, they, and they're sick of running. But every time, without fail, when an individual finally says, God, help me, save me, fix me, I need you. It's the most beautiful thing that our Father has been waiting for to see happen. You finally have trusted me. You finally have called on me, the only one. And I've waited and waited for you to do so. I think that many of us in this room can relate to that. When was it where you finally called on Jesus Christ to save you? When did you believe? And you, and you understand that you weren't able to do it on your own. You, you, you understand now you weren't able to wake up and say, today I'm going to know God. Today's the day I'm going to get it. That's impossible. It's ridiculous. I want to read the word and I will understand. Okay, Mr. Pride. Right? It, it'll never work that way. A man is must come to a place where his will is broken to the point of requesting, asking, being in need. That's called humility. And then we can appreciate God. Is there a fire back there? I don't know. I was going to get the fire extinguished. All right. So upon hearing the word of God, what should we do? The question was asked, what should we do? to escape this wicked and corrupt generation. And, he, and, and they made it very clear, this Christ which you crucified was Lord and Christ. Believe, repent, and be baptized. It's the same message today. It's no different. We're helping people escape a wicked and corrupt generation, aren't we? We're telling people that Jesus is both Lord and the Christ. He's God. And he died and he rose from the dead. And our sin deserves death. But in him we are forgiven. It's the same gospel. It's not complicated. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. And everyone we come in contact with, are we telling them the truth? If we're not, God's good. Listen, no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Amen? But he wants to help us. He wants to grow us 
it doesn't mean because we might find that there's some idolatry or we might find that we're, we're afraid or, or we might find that I'm really not telling the truth because I'm, I'm worried about what people think or I'm a people pleaser. It doesn't mean that we just accept that. Where in the Bible is this, does God say, listen, I know you're a people pleaser. Don't worry about it. I'll see you in heaven. You're fine. Did you, do you see that? Does he want that for anyone? No. I want to help you not be a people pleaser. I know, God, but if I tell them that they, might, they won't love me, <laughs> that they won't call me tomorrow. He's like, okay, am I enough? You can call me. I'll call you. God's like, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you. Yeah, but I need them. That's the problem. You need them more than me? <laughs> but I can't see you. Okay. Do you want to see me more? Yeah. Well, then ask me. Okay. You see where we're going with that? We're called to be transformed to be what? Just like... Where do we go with that? Does Christ smoke pot? Is he a curseaholic? Right? Is he at the strip joints? Is he popping some pills? <laughs> so we got he wants to get rid of all that? Hallelujah. That's what's painful sometimes. Now, now those are some outer things. What about the jealousy, the anger, right? The rage, the insecurity. Come on, the fear. What about the, the shame, the, 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 the loss, the confusion? Well, I don't care what it is. What about all that? Does he want to fix that? Yeah. Because, right. And that's what the church is for. So we can come together and let the Spirit lead us and use us to help one another. Isn't that why, how we're changing? How many people here? Are you just not the same than you were a year ago? Is there anybody that can say that? I'm not the same. The Lord. Keep your focus on that, will you? Some people don't even you know, like this. Yeah, I still curse, though. How often did you curse before a year ago? Oh, every day a second. I was a professional curse. I think I got the the Genesis curse word uh, award. I cursed, I think, uh, 18,000 times in uh, less than two minutes. <laughs> Try beating that one, pal. My point is, I think you really ought to examine and say, because if you've got the spirit in you and you're hearing from God and you're walking with God, you know you're doing a lot of things less than you were. So look at that. I go, ah, I curse once a week. I used to curse every... Okay. Yeah, I'm changing, baby. This is exciting. How'd that happen? It wasn't the, the, the doctor's appointment. Right? You're really changing. There's some burdens that have been, what, lifted. You're not as depressed as you used to be. You're not controlled with that loss or that thing. It's hardly there. It's still baby there, but man, you're seeing some growth. How did that happen? It's a miracle. How? It's, it, it's God. And that's why we come to the point where we say, I can't help but tell people what I know and have seen. And didn't Paul say that? They told him, shut up about Christ. Keep your mouth quiet. And he said, I can't, man. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm complicit. Matter of fact, can I tell you, I, I need to talk to you about Christ. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you to shut up. I know, I know, I know. Listen, I met the Lord, right? He says, I can't help but tell people what I've seen and heard, man. I'm the same. I can't help it, bro. I can't help it. I got eternal life. Oh, shut up. Huh? Don't tell no one. What? I live forever. I don't die. I mean, really, I look forward to going. I got a mansion. I My sins are forgiven. I'm loved by God. I'm a, this is unbelievable. So, unless you know, you ain't going to go. 
But if you know, let's go. Take your bad self with him. Right? Let's go. But I mean, right now we're being trained up. Amen? Amen. Some of us are already going. We're already at a different place. But for the church, we're being trained up. People are already getting saved because of the work God's doing in your life. People are coming here to visit. They're getting saved. They're getting whacked. The people that you're sending emails to, you're telling the correct. Your so, testimonies are on e email. They're on internet. I, I was thinking earlier. I'm way off. I'm not off. I'm not off. I'm off this. Is, uh, is there a guy named Robert here from last night that came into the program, back into the program? Is he here? Yeah. That's you? Yeah. Welcome back, man. <laughs> the guys went out last night, and Robert was in the program, and they put him on the radio when we get to talk. And I just thought when they, when they went up to him, right, it was, it was hard, right? You... You're in that darkness, and your brothers come up. Oh, the light shines. You're like, ah! I'm trying to get high over here. Right? You're blowing it. But really, you, it was God coming to love you. That's, I mean, it don't matter. We got needles in our arm. We're the price. It don't matter. God's going up to us to love us. What? Yeah, I'll break that needle. Come in. I'll walk away from that sin. He's on the radio. You know, I appreciate his honesty. And okay, so he's back home again. All right. Well, let's go. Well, you ask forgiveness. It's over. There. Again, let's have another party for Robin. Yeah. More baloney. Oscar Mayer was his first name. Oh, see, I can't even remember Oscar Mayer commercial. Whatever. But really, that's how much God loves us. So God's like, hey, you came to your senses. So He's like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the fatted calf. We're gonna have a party. We're not remembering your crap, bro. Stay the course, amen? Amen. Get delivered. Go up there and rescue some people once you're healed. Yeah. You were called to love God and know Him. Everything else is garbage, bro. Yeah, it's that simple. Oh, it's not that simple, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some problems, pal. I can tell. <laughs> I'm going to lock you up. we got a padded room in number 17. Put them in there for a while. We have to suffer along with people, amen? We don't enable and support and excuse sin, but we have to suffer along. Now, some people can say, that's the seventh time he's been back. Okay, Mr. Counter. <laughs> Mr. Judgmental. He's upset. Some people are upset. I can't believe he's back. I can't believe that red bastard's back. Yeah. Oh, no. That's how people talk. They're calling him fatherless. They're calling him a bastard. They're judging that he don't have a father. That's not God. Right? Some of us are Christians doing that. You're judging the guy. You don't know that he was weeping and crying an hour ago after giving in sexually just to get high and the shame and the guilt. He wanted to kill himself. And he called on Christ, and somebody from the mission showed up, and we bring him in, and you're upset. Just saying. Oh. Be careful, judge not one to another. Or you shall be judged the same measure you use. The exact same measure will be used against you. See, God don't play with that. Anytime we judge, if we don't repent and see the error of our ways, it will come back to us 
the exact judgment we used, right back to us. And, and sometimes you'll be like, man, why is every time I'm in trouble? All week I'm, I'm in trouble. And you're blaming all these people. And God's like, I'm waiting for you to judge yourself. Yeah, but it's them. Okay, I'll be waiting. Yeah, but they did this. I know, and you tried to hang them. Yeah, but they deserved it. I know, so did you. Whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready to repent from your ungodliness, I'll be here to forgive you. That's what God's saying. And sometimes it takes jail. Or back on the, whatever this whatever it happens to humble us, it's meant to cause us to be godly. Yeah, I thought I could run the place. I was making all my own decisions. Okay. God suffers long, amen. Good stuff, isn't it? Truth is always good, isn't it? Come on, I'm not tickling you. <laughs> We're all, we're all okay. <laughs> Money's coming your way. Just type amen. <laughs> That's fantastic. Did you get the text? Yeah. It's going to be rich. Soon. <laughs> Foolish, isn't it? Foolish. Absolutely foolish. All right. Back to the word, shall we? Baptizing those upon believing. So those who received the word were baptized, and there were added a, that day about 3,000 souls. Notice they didn't have to sign up for a church campaign, go to 17 classes, fill out a form. Come on. They heard the gospel, the pure gospel. That went out, that, that Jesus was, was crucified and killed, and he was both Christ and Lord. And he rose from the dead, and in him is the forgiveness of sins only. There is no name on heaven or earth in which a man can be saved other than the, through the name of Jesus Christ. Escape this wicked and corrupt generation. You're dead in your sins, and hell awaits you, and all those who reject Christ. But he died for you, and he's asking you to repent and be baptized. Come in! Okay, let's go. Is it, is it that simple? Yes, it is. People make decisions for Christ all over the world. Every day. They repent every day. Is it true repentance? That's between the person and God. We may not know right away because there is a test. Because some come to Christ for the cash. Some come to Christ to get them out of the crisis. You see, the motive is not to get them out of hell. They're not coming to Christ to be forgiven of their sin, which deserves hell. They're coming to him for some emotional need, some physical need. Come on. And shame on those who present a gospel that way to appease their itching ears because it's soon going to fade, and then they're going to be what? They're going to be disenfranchised. That's already going to be happening anyways. In other words, we're going to be tested. Jesus tells us those who say they believe will be tested. And some, when they get persecuted for the word, say, hey, this is too much. I just lost a client. He was a Jew. I told him about Jew Jesus, and he cursed me out. I can't lose that job. Who's more important? Your account or Jesus? Well, I don't know. That's, that's up to you. I don't know. I know I went through that. <laughs> they still go through that. But I was, I, I would, God blessed me in a business for years. And I couldn't help but share Christ. I did everything wrong. And God blessed me. Why? Because I was in Egypt. And he should have gave me the name Joseph. Small Joseph, not like Joseph really went through it. What I'm talking about is Christ was first in the workplace. Amen? And I suffered for it, but God blessed it. Because he was first. If he's first, then again, what we're going to learn today is that, again, not out of trying to earn his love or legalism, again, no condemnation. It's all about growing in Christ, growing in knowledge, growing in truth, growing in love, examining your life to say, man, I want to be more like Jesus. Well, that's, he wants you to be more like him. 
As a matter of fact, he commanded that you're more like him. As a matter of fact, he said, you'll, you'll do greater things than I've done. And anyone who says they know me will lose their life to find it. And, and he's commanding, as anyone who loves me will, I'll, I'll be greater than your mother in your life and your daughter and your son. And I, I came to bring division, not peace. I'm telling you, Christ is telling you the truth. A man is to hate his own life and, 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 and anyone that's more important, then you're not worthy to follow him. That's just what he's saying. And he's not going to force anybody. I mean, you tell me, who else has the words of eternal life? Who else can forgive your sin and get you out of hell? Your, the, 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 the boss that you got or the, your parent or somebody? What are people going to do when they stand before Christ? And everyone will. And everyone will confess that he's Lord, even those who go to hell. They will, they will bow. Bef Everyone's going to bow before Jesus. Hitler already met him. Michael Jackson already met him. Elvis Presley already met him. We idolize people? For what? Why would you idolize a sinner? Huh. Why would you idolize any human being? Because of pride. Our only hope is that each and every one of them somehow repented and came to Christ. But everyone will bow, will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. Period. Those that believe in him will have eternal life. Those that don't will have eternal life. But they'll have eternal life in hell. The others will, will have eternal life like in, in, like, I don't even know how to describe It's like, what? Crazy love. Like, I'm, no sin, just... With God, all his family for eternity, and the, the colors. I mean, I don't even know. I, I'm not a creative person that way, but like, we got mansions on earth. Some of them are like, wow. Can you imagine God's mansions? Right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Please put your phones on silent. <laughs> so we hear the gospel. And it's now us who must go and proclaim the gospel. And people hear the word, receive the word, and get baptized and believe. And they're added, just like they were in the Acts church. Teaching them to obey everything God has commanded them. How should we live upon believing? Let's look at Acts 2.42-47. 2, 2, so you got all these people. They're hearing the gospel. They're repenting. They're being baptized. Not, a, not everyone... Uh, is in need, some are rich, some are poor, you, just, like the, the, just like today in the church, right? Some have a lot, some have a little. But let's look with, about what, how the church should be living and what it looks like. And they devoted themselves, Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47, and they devoted themselves to the apostles, what? Not the apostles as, a, as idolatry, to the apostles, what? Teaching. And the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayers. They had devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to fellowship, and to eating together. Come on. And awe came upon, upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Now, there's no, 12, there's no apostles like the 12 apostles. Amen? There are apostles, meaning messengers, those who... Who ascent, right? But there will be no apostles like the unique 12. They, they, those were unique in that they have had to have seen Christ uh, raised from the dead. Or die and come back. The only one that was the abnormal apostle was Paul. Saul, but he did meet Jesus on the horse, remember? He didn't, he didn't witness uh, the death of Christ. They were unique in that way, and God gave them power and signs and wonders to confirm his word. We still have gifts of the Spirit, and we still have apostles, but not in that nature. But we still have gifts and miracles through giftings, through the power of the Spirit. Amen? Now watch. It said, and all, and all who believed, ready, were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all 
as any had need, not just because you said, hey, can I get a few dollars? To those that had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and, ge glad and generous hearts. <clears throat> Praising God and having favor with all the people. And ready? The Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now, some of these messages, again, I, I always have to like put a disclaimer up. Don't be condemned. It, it, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are what? In Christ. There is holiness, there's growth, there's revelation, and we got to speak the truth. I've had some people, I'm talking even pastors be upset. Well, you can't tell my people to live that way. I'm like, whose people? You, you mean God's people? What are you talking Anyway, what I'm saying is, are we in a place as a body of Christians where we are believers and baptized and in fellowship, and it's not the normal, you know, church can sometimes be you know, one day a week, and that's not church. We're not, I'm not talking about church functions, and I'm talking about the Word of God. Where we meet, where we're committed to God and to one another, that we're in agreement, we're in unity, we're sharing with those in need, going from house to house, fellowshipping together, breaking bread, and everyone, everything that God has given us, we, we recognize is not our own, and we have everything in common. Why? Because I think if we can get to that place, then we're going to see the power of God move in a mighty way. As a matter of fact, look at the New Orleans mission. That, uh, missions exist. Missions like this exist, and, they're, and listen, they're wonderful, right? But I want to share with you an even greater vision. That the church does this all the time. That together as a church, we're buying properties, we're bringing people in, we're, with, we're sharing with one, with one another, no one has a need. How powerful, because in, in essence, this is a picture of the, of, of the body of Christ, right? And, and, and listen, we are so grateful for the men and the women in the communities, believers or not, that, that support, that help. But I, when I look at the body of Christ, we're grateful that the body of Christ supports this. But I, what's exciting is that the church in, in its being, in its function, should all, should, we should all be doing this all over the world. Like living together, loving together. It doesn't mean that you're going to have your home and you got to give up your home and we're not talking about that but to collectively we share everything collectively we're helping one another and we're devoted to the teachings of Christ ain't that exciting devoting themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship again meeting the needs through the church acts 4 32 through 37, very similar. It says, now the full number of those who believed were, ready? Were of one heart and soul. And no one said, it's Acts chapter 4, 32 through 37. And again, anytime anyone wants a copy of any sermon, scriptures or notes, just please see Austin, and he will have them each week, the following week, okay? Um, now the full number... Of, of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said, ready, that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. Let's just stay there for a second. All the stuff you got, whose is it? Well, I don't know. It is. But this is where we start to examine. When I first came to Christ and God got me an apartment, and I began to, God told me to, it was his apartment. And I remember I had nothing in it. Like, we'd go shopping each week and get me a plant. And we'd get, I just got a new job. 
right? It was me and God. Then he got me some forks, a whole set, stainless steel, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, right? But I was learning to trust him with everything. But I knew that nothing was mine. See, that's I understood that early. I knew everything I got, everything good comes from who? So we can't take credit, but man, do we want to. I got that bonus today. Whatever. Right? Everything good comes from God. And, and, when, and, any, and any time we don't think that way, it's pride. Because we're looking to what? Look, ourself. Yeah, but that's my mind. I put those hours in. I got that GED. I got that. What's the main thing in there? The main word? I. I. Yeah, I. I. Did you create you? I put myself in the womb. I was the fastest sperm. What? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Well, think about this. 240 million sperm, and you're like the fastest. How would you get there? How did you be the lucky one to get the egg thing? You didn't do that. You had nothing, nothing to do with it. Because God makes it very clear that man is not born by human what? Decision. Oh, you were created. And you weren't created to live apart from God. And you weren't created to be independent of God. And that's sin and that's pride and that's what leads to death. He made a way out for you to know your creator. Yeah. So you could live with purpose. And you can be whole. And everything you search for is over. You don't have to search anymore. It's true, isn't it? So then why do you take pride in your possessions? And that new toaster. Can't have my toaster. And so it matches the kitchen set. I'm saying, my wife's going, you're not giving the toaster away, are you? Give it away, give it away. Give, it, give away that system. It, again, these are areas that may be difficult, but they bring freedom. See, once you let go of anything, of everything, guess what doesn't have hold of you? Anything. Amen. Let's say that again. Once you've given away everything, then what can have hold of you? Nothing. So that's why he says if you, anyone who wants to find his life will what? Lose it. Because that means you're living for who? Yourself. And, and does he let you? Yes. yes. And can you gain the whole world? Yes. yes. And then go to hell. <laughs> that's why he says what good is it to gain the whole world? You want to be the king of the world? And what is, what, is, what is man always fighting for? To be the king of the world. The king of a nation. Run the world. Power, ego, pride, pride of possessions. What you have, what you've accomplished. All of that is of the world. It's of the devil. And that's why Jesus said what? Hate the world. Don't, lo don't love the world and anything in it. For it's not from what? Wow. Can you enjoy the things of the world? Yeah. Why be? Sure. But see, loving the world is different. Because if you love the world, you can't love God. Try doing it. You'll hate one, despise the other, whatever the scripture is. You'll be torn, messed up, in between. Can't, you can't love God and money. Can't love the world. Come out out of the world and be what? Separate. We're in it for one reason. Why are we in the world? To share Christ. To save souls. To glorify God. And and don't and, and listen, many churches really, again, the itching is, they really mess with that. Because they want you to have both. Because they have it. Everyone's supposed to be rich. <laughs> okay, liar. Go to Ethiopia and tell them that. Hey, you're going to be rich. That mud shack you live in, it's coming. You're going to get a new mud. Brand new, thick, heavy mud. It's coming. <laughs> right. 
No, it's all a lie. Again, nothing wrong with wealth and nothing wrong with finances. If God gives you wealth, guess what? Don't trust in it and give generously. Hello? Amen. That's exciting. I gave a lot of money away. I was very excited because it, impo- it was great. I knew what I was sowing into. But it was out of my, it's out of your heart, not out of begrudgingly, not out of, I'm going to give a certain percent every, I get legalism and the law. I'm free. I'm saved by grace through faith in Christ. I don't got to earn God's love. I'm free. I want to give because he tells me. I want to, I want to, that's how he wants us to move in that freedom. Amen? <clears throat> so, none of the people thought that anything belonged to them was their own. But they had everything in common. And with great power, and the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going out giving the, the testimony about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's, that's the gospel. And then we're, we're walking in power in what he's done for us. Amen? And if God gives you a gift of healing or something, and he uses it, then that will confirm as well the gospel. The gift of prayer, the gift of faith, right? We, God uses all of it for what? For his good and his glory. There was not, ready? There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and it was laid at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. Thus Joseph was also called by the apostle Barnabas. So what we're seeing here is, again, a picture of what was more important to them. What was the most important thing to these believers? Jesus Christ and his teaching. Not the job, not the schooling, not the, the vacation. What was most important was Jesus Christ and loving him and living for him because they just escaped hell. And, and the time was short. Uh, don't get me wrong. When I say this is the church, this is the church, but I think the church should not look to missions to do the church's responsibility. Does that make sense? We're grateful. There's over 300, 400 missions all over the world, but God raised up missions because the church is struggling to do it. Does that make sense? You follow me? I, I don't want to be, I'm not trying to be offensive or... We need one another. Amen. We are the church, but we're operating as a power of ministry. Yes, keep sending. Yes, keep funding. God's allowing it, but he wants the whole church to live like this. He wants the whole church to surrender and to give and to help, and then we would meet each other's needs, and we would be in each other's lives, and we would witness together and pray together and live together and, be, and, and agree together. And we would not, not just meet on Sunday, but home to home and house to house and and, and we do that here every day. We eat together. And we, we're, every day we're in the Word. Every day we're in teachings. And people are coming from, from, who are not in the ministry are coming to the ministry. We're excited about that, right? So we want, the, we want to say to the church, let's do it together, all of us. But it's going to take people saying, hey, everything I got is God's. Now, he might not say go sell your house and bring the proceeds to the giving up retreat or your pastor, right? But if he does, at least you'll be open to it. See, again, once you've lost it, everything, and you've given it over, you're going to hear from God. He's like, hey, hey, take out that 401k. Yeah, but I need it. No, we're not going to be around that long. Take it out. <laughs> Go get your money. Put it under the pillow. We need that cash today. My point is, your heart is for Christ first above everything. And you can let it go and be useful to the king. And, and together, no, no one had a need. How many needs are filled here? How many doctor's appointments we have to go to? How, many, how much food we have to get every day? How many toothbrushes? How many heart issues? It's overwhelming. But together, it works. 
And my hope is that everyone that comes through and sees what God did for them, you're going to go live that way radically. Your home ain't going to be home. You're going to bring people in up the streets. You're going to get into the mission. You're, you're stuffing your stuff. You're going to, I mean, because it's all given to you by God for God. Once it becomes given to you by God for you, you're selfish. I've been selfish. Even in Christ. I, I was faithful for a long time, and then I went to a season where I was just selfish. Just absolutely like, you know, you could, oh, I put all that time, no, I, just, I could take some time off, no, I can't take some time off with God. <laughs> right? I, I, I had a, some, I had a, and I went through some tough things, and I go through some things. Don't we got to go through some things to get to that holy, godly, trusting, peaceful place? Right? So this, these scriptures are not saying, well, this is for them. That was for those early Christians. No, it's for us. The same church. We're, walk as Jesus walked. 1 John 2, 3 through 6. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is a propitiation for our sins. Did I say it right? Whatever. Next time you got to say it for me. Propitiation. Hallelujah. And not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him. You ready? By this. This is where the examination takes place. By this we have come to know, uh, know him if we keep his commandments. We're not talking about salvation. We're talking about I know him and I'm going to be obeying him is going to be one of the, the uh, things that I evaluate to confirm I know him. Now, can you know Christ and still not obey him? Yes. Yeah, there are those like we talked about earlier who have not trusted God with that pain, that issue, and so it's causing them to be disobedient, but they still believe in Jesus. Okay, there'll be discipline, there'll be consequences, but if they have Christ, and they have the Spirit, amen? But we can never make an excuse to not obey him, but we do. We should examine, I'm, 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 I love him, but I'm, I'm not obeying him, and I need help. Because the thing, those issues are, I'm not trusting him for that. So it's, I guess I'm not loving him because I'm not trusting him. So it's important to be honest, right? We don't, we don't condemn anybody that's in Christ. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a lie and the truth is not in him. So this is a person who says, I'm fine and doesn't obey God at all. He's not, he don't even have issues. He's just saying, Oh, I love the Lord, but he does not. There's no obedience at all. And he's practicing sin. Well, God would tell him you're a liar. You can't say you love me and you're not, you don't have a heart ready to obey me. If you don't have a heart to obey God and you don't care, you really need, he's saying you're a liar. I don't care about going to church. I don't care about sleeping with women. I don't care. I'm fine. I love God. God loves me. No, you're a liar. I don't have to follow God. No, you're a liar. Now, they, now they're going to attack you. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're just telling people what the word says, amen? amen? But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way he walked. Now, again, that's an intrepid uh, statement that can bring a little bit of fear. No, it's God's will that you walk holy, right? He, it's, he grows you. He's giving you power. Just embrace that. Don't look at it as fearful. Say, God, I need you to help me. Amen? It's, it, God's will is to, is to transform us. 1 Peter 1.14. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former, ready? Ignorance. 
Don't be conformed to the past ignorance that you lived in. And that's the old ways, amen? That's the old nature. That's the old self. Whatever it was that it wasn't lined up with the word of God, say, I'm, a, I'm abandoning that and I'm following Christ. Okay? But as he who walked, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Conduct, Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Now, he's not talking about achieving this on your own. It's impossible. We have, we're filled with the spirit and we now are being transformed and we're already righteous in Christ. And because of that, we are to walk like Christ. And we've got to be holy. So again, we're examining. Am I walking holy after him? Do, do, do I desire to be holy? And okay, now what are the things that are not holy? Am I, am I confessing those to God and asking him to fix and help me with? Amen? Teachings, teaching uh, the commands of Christ, when again, when it comes to the world, we, we did talk about this. So in 1 John 2.15, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, ready? The desires of the flesh and the desires of the, the eyes and the pride in possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world, ready, is passing away along with its desires. Can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to be out of the world. All those things that we battle are the desires of the world, aren't they? And that's what Satan uses. Didn't he show Jesus that? He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of all the world? Satan showed God all the cities, all of the gold. Like, and he said, listen, if you bow down to me, I'll give it to you. Doesn't he do that with you? Bow down to me, I'll give you everything. All the money, all the all the women, everything you can have it all. It's the same tactic he uses with everyone. But see, when we come to Christ, what becomes more important is Christ in the world. We saw that with Moses, didn't we? He gave up Egypt and the pleasures of sin for a while to to suffer it, a slave as a Jew in Egypt, because he found out who he was. I mean, that, that was very difficult to go from the Pharaoh's son. <laughs> Who's your father? Oh, the Pharaoh. <laughs> you got everything. And to willingly say, I can't, I gotta, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Jew, he said. Those are my brothers, and I, I'm leaving Egypt. I'm leaving you for that. And not fear the edict of the king, not fear the punishment, not fear the wrath. God was more important. And that's what God's saying to you. Is, is Christ more important to us? Right? Is he more important to us? Are, are you, are, have you left the world? Have you left all the bad relationships? Have you left all the sin? Have, do you want to? Right? For those who have, you're finding what? Joy, peace, safety, happiness, contentment. And for those who are in between, if you've you got one foot in, one foot out, you're sitting at a table of demons and you're sitting at the table of God and he says you can't do that. Amen. Get rid of the table of demons. Matter of fact, stop preaching. You'll, they'll leave quick. But you can't have both, man. And if we try to hold on to both, our agenda, our life, our will, we'll be in deception, we'll be in rebellion, we'll be in confusion, we'll be people-pleasing, we'll be lying, and you wonder why things are going wrong. And then you get that thing. Listen, doesn't it always... Like, isn't it the worst? Look at Judas. How, how long did he plot to get that money? He was taking money out of... I mean, he's hanging out with Christ, right? And the disciples. And he was stealing money. <laughs> Make a little cash on the side. And what happened? He got the big payday. The 30, the 30 pieces of silver, right? 
And at the end of the day, he threw the money back at them because he was miserable. God's going to turn us over to the world, man. But he doesn't want you to go there. He wants you to just walk with him and trust him. And it doesn't matter what you've done in the past and what's happened. He'll use you right where you are in mighty ways. Whether, you, whether you're in Egypt, whether you're in jail. Listen, your life can be fruitful and full of peace and, and God's power. And, and, he, and he can turn it around in humble ways we can never imagine when our hearts are after him. Amen? And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain it might become plain that they are all not of us. That's in the church, the wheat and the tears. Remind them of, of, of these things. Uh, command, the command to obey God's word. Man is called to believe every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Do not go beyond what is written. Amen? Amen. If we struggle with going beyond what is written, well, I think this, I feel that, well, I'm not sure, that, that is all pride. It's all pride. You are, and I, you might be argumentative. You, you might co cause people to, to wander from the truth. Listen, God's God. If we say we believe, then let us believe everything that proceeded out of his mouth. And let us get in line with him, amen? And where there's an area that we don't understand, let's ask for understanding. But let's agree with God. 2 Timothy 4.1.2, before we close. Some people go, yes, I understand. For 2 Timothy 4.1.2, Char I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience, and teaching. This is our command to preach the word. We make no excuses for it. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that has overcome the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And that's 1 John 5, 1. You've overcome the world, man. Now listen, don't be afraid. You've overcome Satan. You've overcome the world. Let's live for him. And it's not going to be pretty at times. Let's put him first. Let's repent of things. Come on up, Keith. That we know might be... Uh, troublesome things that we know that we're maybe getting off on some areas, right? First and foremost, what's always a matter of first importance is that you that are here today know that you have eternal life, that you know that your sins are forgiven, that upon belief, God gave you His Spirit. And he's called you sons and daughters. This is the most important question. I often say every week, the scripture that is so true that says, by your words, by your testimony, you will be acquitted. And by your testimony, you will be condemned. In other words, right here and right now, what's your testimony? Are you acquitted? Meaning, are you here right now going, I am forgiven. My sins are paid for. I'm a Christian. I have eternal life. And the Spirit has confirmed with my spirit that Jesus is God. And he died and rose from the dead. And for this I am confident, not in myself, 
but in the risen Christ whom I serve. If that be your testimony, then you are acquitted before God right here, right now, which means when you die, which could be today or tomorrow or in the next hour, for we do not know when that day is, you will be acquitted the moment you die and stand before God. That's what's important. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let us take time to pray. For there may be someone here that does not have that testimony. That they're not acquitted. They're actually condemned. Right now, you if you're here and you say, I cannot say that I believe or trust or even know Jesus Christ. I, I, I know I've sinned, and, I, and you're telling me there's a penalty for it. And, and hell for those who reject Christ, but I don't know this Christ. And today I've heard and I want to, to believe. I want to have faith. If that's you, you have the courage to say, that's me. Pray for me, Brother John. There'd be one here. Is there anyone here that says, I don't know. Bless you. Anyone else that can say, I don't know where I'm going when I die. I, 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 I'm, I wouldn't be acquitted. I believe I'm condemned. I, I, I don't believe. I don't trust. Bless you, brother. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage, man. Listen, we said yes to Satan. We said yes to drugs. We said yes to so many other things that were evil. And right now, for you that just said, hey, pray for me. I'm not sure where I'm going. I want to say God bless you guys. So right now where you are, it takes a man's will to, to come to that place and say, Jesus, I don't see you, but I call on you. Right now where you're sitting, would you say, Jesus, I don't believe in you. I don't, I don't see you, but I want to be forgiven. I want to be saved. I want to have eternal life. And you give it to me. Could you help me to believe? Would you just ask him yourself? Right where you're at. Call on anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's faithful to save your brother. And let me tell you, when you know it, tell somebody. I trust God, and I trust His Word. And if this place was, if this place was was built by God just for you two, you three, you four that said, "Save me," then it was worth it, because He thinks you're worth dying for, and Christ has paid. He's paid the penalty. Father, I pray for the men that called on you, Father, that they would know you. I pray that you would give them faith to believe. I pray that I thank you for the courage, God, that they had to, to say, Jesus, save me. Father, that you heard them. And I just intercede on the behalf, Father, that they would, they would have, they would be good ground, Lord. That they would be broken over their sin, that they would see it for what it deserves. And God, as they called on you now, God, that they would truly understand the gospel. They would come to you with all of it. And receive you, Christ. Would you receive the Christ right now? I said, Christ, I receive you. I don't see you, but I receive you. I call on you. Thanks for dying for me. By faith, I, I, I believe it. Give me faith, Lord. And for those here today, for the many believers in the room right now, if you could say, you know, Lord, you're not really first. Always. Can we be honest? I, he's not always first for me. Let's go to him right now in prayer as a family to ask him to, to help us walk in, in where he's first. And where everything we have, everything he's given us, that would be sold out to be ready and willing to use it for his glory. Can we do that as a family? If you're sitting here right now, just take a few minutes. And if you can say, Father, you're not first in every area, and I want you to be first. If that's you, just pray. Just repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for, for, for being lazy. Forgive me for being selfish. Forgive me for holding on to anything in this world. What is it? Maybe, that, maybe he showed you that. Would you just give that to him? Lord, I give you my wife. I give you, I give you my job right now. Give it to him. Give it away. 
Give your life away. Let's take a minute and just pray all of us. If, if you feel that you need to lay yourself at the altar, give yourself away again. I'm a, I would say just pray. We'll, we'll be in agreement with you. Father, I'm praying too, Father. I just give you my life. I thank you everything, everything good you've given me. God, I'm sorry for holding on to it. I'm sorry for insisting in my way. God, you're all that matters. You're all that's important. I lose my life to you today. And I pray over the men and women that are here, God. God, that if they maybe they know that they're not where you want them to be, but that today they said, yes, Lord, send me. I give you my life. God, bless them, Lord. Uh, help them answer that prayer, God. The thing that they just gave you, Father. And maybe you're going to test them, but Father, help them to pass that test. Help us to fall in love with you more and more and more. Where we would obey your commandments and your teachings. And we would be the church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your Sunday that God has given you.